Today we're going to talk about Ticket to $10,000 a month. And I just want to tell you what this presentation won't be. And I probably shouldn't call it a presentation. It's more of a workshop. But uh, there's a couple of things it's not going to be. It's not going to be lots of useless information. You're not going to be sitting at your desk snoring. We're going to make a little bit of fun. Uh, it's not going to be complex and techy for those that are starting up. We don't want to talk all the tech and acronyms and all that sort of stuff just yet. It might be a little bit at the end. Uh, I'm not going to give you strategies that are out of reach. Okay, so... One thing that you might find when you're going around YouTube and things like that is that you have these gurus out there that might teach you things just feel a little bit too far-fetched. You know, we're sometimes comparing our beginner level to their advanced level, and we need to be comparing beginner to beginner. We can't be trying to do advanced strategies when we haven't learned to walk yet. Okay, so that's what's going to happen in this session. But if you stick around, I'm going to promise you a couple of things, all right? I want to make sure that I'm going to make a commitment to you if you can make a commitment to me. My commitment is that you're going to have a step-by-step -step plan to grow your store to $10,000 a month. Okay. That's my commitment to you. So, AKA world domination. <laughs> the second thing is if you stick around bonus, because I know sometimes it's an hour or so we're going to be here and you're going to hear me a lot and you might just want to leave. But if you stick around, I'm going to give you a bonus and I'm going to give you hundred plus ad creatives that are going to convert right, right at the end. Just uh, because that's just my little glue of trying to get you to stick around. All right. Does that sound good? We cool with this? Yeah. Write in the chat. Does it sound good? Yes. No, maybe, perhaps. Yes. Yes. Sounds great. All right. Cool. Thank you, team. All right. Well, why should you listen to me? I don't know how you found me, but thank you for finding me. I'll just give you a quick overview. Uh, I've been ranked top 50 in e-commerce three times now. Uh, I launched a store and made a million dollars in 18 months. I've helped 150 plus. That's actually should be bigger now, but helped a lot of stores grow. I've uh, worked for some big brands um, that have made billions of dollars a year. And now I'm some sort of YouTuber for some reason, but that's cool. I enjoy that. That's a lot of fun. All right. So you're probably here for a couple of reasons, right? Why have you joined this call? Why have you taken an hour out of your day, out of your evening, got up early, stayed up late to be here? Well, the first reason is you've probably started a store and you're not getting enough sales. If this is you while I'm talking team, just write in the chat me if you agree, right? The second reason you're probably here is that you've tried every trick. You've tried all the things, you followed the gurus, hasn't worked. It's meant to work. It's worked for everyone else. Why isn't it working for me? And you're sick of seeing everybody else win and you're just still sitting there in your nine to five job. Yeah. That's definitely where I was. You want to change your financial situation. You want to turn this side hustle into a full-time hustle, right? You want to get a little bit extra cash in the bank so you can do the things that you want to do. Okay. Buy the nice new phone, get a watch, buy the Lamborghini. And you want to create yourself a freedom business, okay? This is what I love about e-commerce. It's a freedom business, right? It's one of those businesses that you don't need to be tied to. It's one of those businesses that you can be, uh, and in fact, I've done this. You can be sitting watching your kids swimming on a Saturday afternoon and you're seeing your phone to chin, right? You can be playing golf on the golf course and you're seeing sales come in. Right? That's what I love about this sort of business. It's great, a lot of fun. It means that you're in control of your life. Okay, so this is probably why you're here. And this is exactly where these guys were. And those are in boot camp, probably recognize these people I'm going to put up. I'm going to just put up a couple of case studies just to show that what we're teaching actually works. This is Al and Jess. Okay. They've now uh, become a part of our elite team. So they're now in the, the path to a million dollars a year. But they joined us at the uh, start of last year, I think it was now. They were barely doing maybe $500 a month, $1,000 a month. They run, they run a handmade business. And now they, you can sort of see that point there. They're now up to about twenty-five dollars to $30,000 a month. Right. Handmade business. Really easy, really cool, really simple. Mum and mum and daughter team. These guys are amazing. Uh, they're doing some great, great stuff. And then we've got Mitchell. Uh, we talk about Mitchell a lot because it's just I, it still blows my mind with this guy, what he did, right? So he started with us uh, and he creates, he makes cookie cutters, okay? Like just little things where you make little cookies. Uses a 3D printer to make them. He was sort of doing $1,000 a month, joined the boot camp and... He's now making $60,000 a month. Over the last year and a half, he's made $717,000. And he still drives his truck every day, right? He still does deliveries every day, driving his truck across Australia, right? $717,000 while still driving a truck. It's pretty epic, okay? And then you guys also know we've got lots of other testimonials. Thousands of other people have been through this program and getting similar results. So that's it. Just to show you that what we're going to teach today works, okay? But this is how they did it. And this is what we're going to talk about today. They implemented a framework that I've developed, which is called the Ecom Operating System. And the idea about making this operating system was 
when I sort of worked in e-commerce for, you know, some really big brands in Australia and some global brands, what I noticed was everything was the same. All the brands operated the same way and we did the same thing. We just didn't know we were doing the same thing. So it was a repeatable formula. So what I wanted to do was think about how do I repeat this formula over and over again so that if I spin up a new store, I just knew what to do. Okay. So I sort of started thinking about it and sketched it out and then applied it to the, to my store. When I left working for those brands and launched my own business, I applied and I said, oh, this actually works. So I decided to try and document it, make it a framework, and then here I am trying to teach it to people. So I call it the e-com operating system. It's super simple. Basically, the way it works is we have sort of our goal, okay? Our goal in this business or in this product call is to get the $10,000 a month, okay? So that's the goal. We do that by breaking up into three really clear, simple categories. And by the way, uh, please grab a notepad. I should have said this at the start, notepad and pen, because you're going to be writing some stuff down today. There's going to be checklists. There's going to be things for you to do. So yeah, grab a notepad and pen. So I want to get to $10,000 a month, all right? We break it up into three super, super simple ways. We, we look at a way of attracting our customers. Okay, that's getting our traffic. Once we've attracted them, we've got to work out how we're going to convert them. Sorry about my messy writing. And then once we know that, we then need to scale that business, okay? So it's super simple. We work out where we'll get people from, okay? We can drive people to our store. That's great. We get traffic. We pay for traffic. We do whatever we need to do. We want to work out how we convert them and we want to work out how we scale them. So that's the theory behind it. But there's obviously needs to be things that we've got to do to make that happen. So when it comes to attracting people, you guys are probably familiar with a little bit of this, but I'm just going to take you back to school for a little bit. There's three ways that we get traffic in our business, the way that we attract people. And it's the three ways I'm going to teach you today. We've got ads. We all know about ads. Okay. We have email. And we have SEO. This is the way that we think about getting traffic in. Now, there's 10, 20, 30 other different ways about doing it. But when we're at this $10,000 a month mark, or we want to get to that, we don't want to be doing everything. We just want to do the things that work and we want to do them well. Okay. So yes, we can get the shiny objects. We can do the TikTok ads and we can play in Bing. We can do Pinterest ads. We can try LinkedIn. But we know that if we do the basics well, we, it works. Okay. We want to focus. We want to be laser focused on the things that work. Okay. So that's the first three ways we get it. Then when we think about conversion, there's only... Two or three things that we want to focus on here as well. The first one is making sure that we have our site set up perfectly, okay? Is our site set up correctly? Do we have the right theme? Are we using the right apps? Do we have the right content on there? Then we want to make sure that our PDP is set up. Here's your first acronym, okay? PDP stands for product detail page. This is the page that people go to when they decide to buy or not buy, when they click add to cart. It's a very, 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 very important page, right? That page sucks, no one's gonna buy it, okay? It's like going to the shelf of the supermarket and everything on the shelf being blank, right? We wanna, if everything on the shelf was blank, you wouldn't buy anything. That's why we make sure our products on the shelf look nice. They've got a nice covers. They've got nice, you know, slogans on there. They've got all that sort of stuff. That's your product, product page, it's your sales page. And they wanna make sure that we have a great, uh, oh, sorry about that. Oh, good. <laughs> I'll just quickly redraw that for you. You're lucky I've drawn this about 100 times. Okay, so attract, convert, scale. Okay. And then we went into ads, email, and then SEO. Okay. And then in convert, we want to go to our site. I know we want to make sure that our PDP is set up, but we also want to make sure we got great support. Okay. So we want to make sure that when people come into our world, that we give them an amazing experience. I want you to think again about like a, a retail store you might go into. Imagine you walked in a store and you probably do this a lot because going to stores these days is quite terrible. Um, and no one talks to you. You walk in, you want to buy a pair of sneakers and no one talks to you. Okay. Or there's just nowhere to get help. What do you do? You walk out the store, okay? So this store sucks. I'm getting out of here. The same applies for e-commerce. We want to make sure we've got support. And this is what a lot of people get wrong, especially in the dropshipping world. When we're, if we run a dropshipping store, we, we don't want to be contacted. We don't want to be the person that gets in contact. But 
uh, we, we don't want to, we're just going to leave a little email address there, but actually the person that provides the best support wins. Okay. And then when it comes to scale, when we're at 10,000, there's only two things that we really need to focus on. Okay. We need to focus on our numbers. And we need to focus on who's around us. And that's team. Okay. Sorry about the writing. I just don't want this screen to go white again. Um, focus on our numbers and our team. And when I say numbers, we need to know a little bit about margins. We need to know about economics. We need to know how much to spend on ads. We need to know how to stay profitable because that's the fuel that's going to fuel our growth if we get that right. And when it comes to team, we want to make sure we have the right people around us. And team doesn't necessarily mean we need to hire all these people. It just means that we need to have access to the right people. You know, do we have someone on board that can help us with our designs? Do we have someone that can teach us? Do we have someone that can do our support? As we grow, the only way we grow is with people around us. And, and I made the mistake once of trying to grow my business all by myself, but I ended up working 18 hour days and responding to emails and doing all these things at once. And I couldn't grow my business, and actually um, slowed my business down. So team's really, really important. Can't do everything yourself. Is this all making sense to everyone? Yeah, awesome. Let me know in the chat, what's something that you found interesting about the Ecom operating system? One thing that you found really interesting about this or something you've learned gives me opportunity to have a coffee. It's one thing we've learned. Okay, excellent. Need P2P review from the bootcamp. Absolutely, Matt, 100%. Need to nurture the number area, 100%. Focus on the basics, streamline way of viewing everything, 100%. It's really simple. How do we get customers? How do we make sure they convert? And how do we do it again? That's all we're doing, right? So all the three things we're doing, nothing more than that. That's all your focus needs to be, prioritizing. All right, so that's all well and good. It looks beautiful in this beautiful circle, but how does it actually work? So I'm going to give you the roadmap to 10K. So we don't want to be doing everything at once. We need to be doing everything in a particular order, okay? There's no point going and running your ads right now if your store's not set up, right? There's no point setting a store up if you don't have all the right information. There's no point running emails if you don't have an email list. There's no point. So we want to make sure that we're moving it out in the right order, okay? So I'm going to take you through the order, and we're going to take you through each one of those today with a checklist of the things that you need to do, and you're going to get those done, all right? So make sure that pen and paper's out. So if we think about that e-com operating system, okay? Where we want to do is we want to get you from here to here, okay? That's our, that's our roadmap that we want to think about. And this is what we want to focus on first. The first thing we need to focus on is our product page. Now, I'm going to make an assumption here. This is not a session about showing you how to choose the right product. This is a session about you've already got a product to sell and you're ready to rock and roll, okay? So I'm assuming you've got a product that people want to buy. We'll just take that as a bit of a uh, pretense, okay? So product is the first one. The second one is making sure that our site is set up correctly, okay? We think about this, and I'm going to refer back to retail a lot because re the retail is probably the, you know, it's a tangible thing that we can picture, okay? And really all we're doing is retail online. Think about if you're starting a retail outlet, a shop, and you open the shop doors and you just put a product sitting in the middle of the store, and then you put an ad in the newspaper and someone walks in and they're like, this is the worst shop I've ever been in. Like, they haven't even painted the walls, okay? I don't even know where to go. I've just got this pile of products on the floor and I need to sort through them. Similar to what you've got to think about your store, okay? Got to get this done first. All right, once we've done that, we've got to do some foundational work. So we have to get our SEO set up. And the reason we do that now is SEO takes time, okay? SEO is one of those things where we go in, we put our foundations in, we do all the, the hard work, and then it pays off over time while, the while we're doing the rest of the stuff. So we're sort of planting the seeds. It's a bit like a, a winery, right? You uh, start a winery, you've got to... Hey, like you got to pl plant the, the vines and they don't start fruiting for a couple of years. SEO is very similar to that. We want to plant the vines, okay? And if you do, I don't know if you know about wineries, but if you do want to start selling wine straight away, you're going to have to buy grapes from someone else while your grapes are growing. And that's effectively what we're going to be doing here. I think that metaphor made sense. Maybe I've drank too much wine. All right. After that, we then want to think about our email program, okay? This is the retention because we want to get our email set up so that when we do start driving people here, that we have the ability to either capture their information or capture the sale. Because if we don't capture the sale, we want to at least be able to talk to them again. Okay, So we want to make sure that's set up. Okay, So we're getting all our foundations set up first. 
So if we've got our product set up, we've got our site set up, our SEO is planted, our emails are ready to rock and roll, then and only then will we start out. I did it again. I don't know why this thing's doing it. Then I'm just going to do it here because I don't want to redraw it. Then And then we do our ads, okay? Then we start our ads. Once we've got our ads rolling, then we can start to think about scale. And if we do that well, we're on the way to 10K. So it was product, site, SEO, and email. Okay, This is the path. Super simple path. And I don't want you to do anything else but this. Okay, It's a really simple layout, the way to go. If we think about scaling our ads before we've got our site set up, it's not going to work. If we think about trying to send emails before we're getting people in our email list, you're going to be sending to no one. Okay? If we just rush it and get a site and don't get our site set up and run ads, we're not going to convert. We're going to have a low conversion rate. Okay? Super, super simple, super clear. All right. Yeah, 100%. SEO and keywords, super, so clear. I, I agree. Keyong. All right. So should we get into actually what we need to do? I think we should. All right, so the first thing I want you to introduce you to is called our perfect product page, okay? Now I'm gonna take you through what it is, but basically the product page is your sales page. This is the part where someone is making the decision to buy your product or not buy your product. So they've got that big black button that says buy now, okay? Our goal of this page, we have one super clear goal is to remove all friction and remove all doubt and get them to click that add to cart button. That's our goal here. All right, remove any reason for them to not click add to cart. And when we, we look at it via that lens, we can start to think about it, okay? Do they need to make decisions on whether they should click that add to cart or not? We wanna take those decisions away from them. So the only decision they need to make is add to cart. And I'll take you through how we think about this. So the first thing we need to make sure they have is at least five images and, and one video if you can, one or more videos. Reason for that is they need to be able to touch and feel the product. Right? If we just put one super silly image up, they're not going to know what it is. Okay. If people see multiple images, even if you've got like a, I know there's a couple of people on here that, uh, if I think about you, Ada, and you guys have like a, one bottle of like, a, you know, I'll call it medicine, but what, are, what do we call it? oils, right? So one, one bottle of treatment. It's a bottle. Like, how many photos can you really take of that? Okay. But people do like to see the front, the back. They like to see a close up. They like to see the lid. They like to see the box because it just feels like you're giving them more information. They feel like they're well informed to make the right decision. Okay. So we need at least five images. If we can, we want to have uh, one video. Think about the person should be able to pick it up and turn it around in their head. Okay. First things first. Same applies for fashion. Actually, fashion is probably a good one. Same applies very close to fashion. When I worked at Super Dry, we sold t-shirts. Okay. Very simple t-shirt. We still had seven images for that t-shirt, right? We had front back, right? For very simple. We had it on a model. We had it on a model turning around sideways. We had a close up of the detail. We had a close up of the, the print. We had a close up of the sleeve. And then we had like the size guide. We had the little features and benefits thing because we wanted to give them as much information as possible so that they had no reason to say no. Okay. Imagine they looked at it and they said, oh, but I don't know what that detail looks like, or I'm not really sure what the fit is on that, or what are the ingredients on that thing again? Or what does the sole look like in that shoe, right? We don't want them to have any questions. We want to be able to answer all their questions for you, okay? Uh, Pamela, distraction, uh, good question. An example of moving, so Pamela's just asked, can you give examples of distractions to rem that remove people from product pages? Uh, yeah, sending them to other products, right? Sometimes like, why don't you think about this? That can be one, but we put that right down in the bottom of the page. The other one is having them have to go somewhere else to find out how much the shipping cost is, okay? Or find out how to get returns. We'll talk a little bit about that in the next few things. Okay, the next one is we want to have an outcome-based description, okay? People buy products because they want something to happen, okay? They want something to happen. So what's the outcome of buying that product, okay? I want to buy this T-shirt because... I want to wear that brand and be seen in public to have this cool brand. Or I want to buy that hair product because it makes my hair softer. I want to buy those kids' toys to make my kids happy. I want to give them, make them smarter. I want to educate them. We need to think about an outcome-based description. Too many people put the features in here, made from 100% cotton, viscose material, you know, 73% water, 2% this. No one cares about that. All they care about is what's this product going to do for me? 
Okay, that's the important one here. Products that sell have outcome-based descriptions. The next one, clear shipping price and speed on the product page. People need to know how much is it gonna cost me to ship this thing and how fast am I gonna get it? Amazon do this exceptionally well. Who uses Amazon here? Put your hand up. Yep, yep, yep. How good is it when it says you're gonna get this tomorrow at 9 a.m. or you're gonna get this in three hours, right? Even if it's more expensive, I'll buy it because I know when I'm gonna get it. Even if I don't need it that quick, I want it because they told me I can have it by then, okay? That's why, because we just want the thing. So we need to be able to do that in our store as best as possible. I don't want you to send people away from the page here. We've got to keep them here, okay? All right, uh, remove all risks. Remove any risk of buying this product, AKA guarantee. So the biggest thing about when someone buys something online is like, well, oh, is this going to fit me? What if it happens if it breaks? What if it goes wrong? Will I be able to contact someone? Oh my gosh. So we want to remove all those risks. We had one client and they sold this metal, uh, this metal arm for a barbecue. It's a very interesting product, but Basically, this was made of stainless steel. It was welded ridiculously. Like it would, it would, if there was an earthquake, this would be thing would still be standing. It'd be it and the cockroaches hanging out together, right? It's that good. Now, I said to her, I said, she's like, oh, they're just not converting very well. I said, if would this thing last like a hundred years? She goes, oh yeah, of course it would. So we put a guarantee on her store that said guaranteed for ninety nine years or your money back, right? Or we'll replace it in a ninety nine year replacement guarantee or something like that. That's all we put on there. And so we put it on there and a conversion rate, boop, changed just by having that little thing on there because we removed the risk. People are like, oh, this is cool. It's not one of those cheap imports. Like we're giving it $99. Super simple. Think about how you can remove the risk. Uh, product reviews. If you're not doing this, you're crazy. You need product reviews. People need to prove proof that what you're saying is true. Okay. We can all say, oh my gosh, I have the best product in the world. It's 99 year guarantee. But if people, if other people aren't saying it, then it's not true. Okay, we need other people to say it. Reviews are uh, number one. Like we tell every single person on that store. I'll give you another story. I'm, I'm going to drop a few stories here. One of our other members, she came in the group and she would run a fashion store, beautiful aesthetic, clean, minimal, just black and white. And all it was was the product photos, beautiful, high-end modeling photos. And I said, we need to put reviews on this thing. She goes, I can't. Look, they look ugly. I can't do that. They're so ugly. It's going to make my store look really Porsche because none of them, none of the luxury fashion brands do it. Well, in fact, they do, but they, they, uh, the one she was looking at didn't. And I said, but that's okay. And she's so, I, she pushed through, she took my advice and put reviews on conversion rate doubled. Right. And not only that, she got hundreds of reviews, but the reviews had, had a double thing. It didn't just help improve in conversion rates, it helped her improve her product because she got feedback on things that people didn't like and what they did like. And then she doubled down on those things. Reviews are a game changer. Frequently asked questions, okay? This is removing the risk. This is a really powerful one that um, that should be constantly evolving. Think about your product. For those that have sold a couple, think about maybe how hard it was to get that first sale. Imagine someone's asking you five or six questions before they buy something, right? If they've reached out on live chat or email to ask you those questions, then there's a good chance that a hundred other people have that same question. They just haven't asked it. So if you're getting lots of questions about your product, we need to put it in our frequently asked questions. Very important. And it has to be on the product page. A lot of people put their frequently asked questions on another page. Keep them on your product page. Uh, and then support options. This is a huge one as well. So people need to know where they can get help. They need to know that there's a human behind the scenes. They need to know that if something goes wrong, there's someone there to help them. All right. That can be via email. That can be via form. It could be via live chat. It could be via phone number. The more options you have of them contacting you, the, the more your conversion rate will go up. Okay. If you've got a phone number, if you've got 24 seven hours, if you've got all this sort of stuff. Now, obviously you can't get there, especially if you're on a freedom business, but as we move to the future, we get other people to do that for us. Okay. Uh, one brand in, in the US, uh, Chewy.com. You guys might've heard of it for those are based in the US, really big uh, pet food brand. They, they used to have nine to five um, support, phone support. They changed, the, but they realized they were getting a lot of inquiries in the evening, right? Because a lot of people get home from work. They need to buy the food for their dogs. So what they did is they put on 24 seven phone support. Obviously they're a billion dollar company, but they were able to put on 24 seven phone support and it changes their conversion rate like that, right? Just because people realized that they had someone to talk to if they needed it. They didn't necessarily use the phone support, but it was there if they needed it. So just a, a, a watch out. Okay, um, I jumped ahead a little bit there. What's everyone learned about the product page? Give me one thing that you can take away and put on your site right now. Chuck that in the chat, please.
FAQ Zeta. Absolutely. Especially for your product, 100%. Shipping. FAQs on the same page. Yep. Hey, and Dave, FAQs should be about the product, right? Not necessarily about, you can put your like, you know, overall brand information, like shipping and things in there, but it should be about answer, questions that someone has about that product. Proof the descriptions, video, support options. Yeah, awesome. So many things we can take away from this and I bet you, you're not doing them all, okay? It's actually hard to fit all these things on. We're doing a page design at the moment and it is quite challenging, but if you get it right, cha-ching. Wait a second. Where's my thing going? If you get it right... So now, now I'm adding audio video into this one here, AV. All right, so let's go about setting up your site team. So we've got the product page set up. Now we want to set up your site, okay? So um, a big one here, which people forget about, is having a clear offer, right? People want to know when they land on your store, what is it that you sell? And what is it that you're trying to sell? And what is your best offer that you're putting out there? Again, if you think about walking through a mall, you walk through there and you've got all these windows in front of them and they put signs up in the window. Right? You look at that sign and that sign's the thing that gets you to go through the door. That's the same thing that we need to have on our homepage or wherever the person lands. They need to know the instant they land on that store what it is that you sell and they need to know what your offer is and why you exist. Okay, Really, really important metric there. Think about it as a sign in the window that attracts people to come through the door. When I was at Superdry, we had a, I don't know, 50 or 60 retail stores and one of the metrics for the, the retail team was foot traffic, right? And so what they wanted to do was the way they were to increase foot traffic was to change the sign on the front window. So they used to split test signs. Like we split test websites, they were split testing signs. In some stores, they had one sign. Other stores, they had the other sign to try and improve to see what the foot traffic was on that. Same applies to your store. The second thing we need to make sure we have, and this is a big one that people often overlook, is menu based on keywords. So when I talk about your menu, that's your navigation. Okay, That's the part that goes across the top. The reason we have this, oh, before I go, the reason we have it, what a lot of people have is shop. Yeah. <laughs> Can you write in your in the chat if you're the one, if you have shop? I'm not going to judge you. It's cool. We're all we're in a safe space. Do you just have the word shop in there? Yeah. Especially for a big catalog, the word shop. If you don't, this is good. Uh, there you go, Brian. I knew there had to be one. There's always one in the uh, one in the group. That's okay. So yeah, there we go, Nikhil. All right. Okay. So a few of you have it. So we're going to change your world today, right? So a couple of reasons why that is a bad idea. Firstly, imagine you walked into a shop. Imagine you walked into a, a supermarket and there's 12 aisles and it just says at the top shop, where do you go? You don't know where to go, right? First, so you, firstly, you don't know where to go. Secondly, you don't know what, the, what that shop sells, okay? So by putting the menu of what you sell at the top, people instantly know what this shop is about, instantly. Okay. It's basically subliminal messaging to say, this is what we sell. Okay, Then it also helps them go down the right aisle, especially if you have uh, someone to that 100 plus products, they know which aisle to go down. Okay, So from a user experience perspective, it crushes. But there's also an SEO perspective there. So by putting the keywords in the text in the menu really helps with your search engine optimization. It's all about making the user experience better, subliminal messaging about what you sell, and just making sure people don't get lost. Our goal is to get them from that homepage to your product page as quickly as possible. And again, we want to take the decision out of them that they're like, where do I click to find where I need to go? It's right there in front of them. Just click the thing. Okay. The next thing is, is why should they choose you? Why should they choose you over someone else? Especially when we're in a, we operate in a commoditized environment. Okay. Why should they choose you over someone else? What makes you different? Now, if I think about E-commerce, and this is going to be maybe a bit of a realization for both for, for some people here. Everyone can sell the same thing, okay? And if all we're, if we're just trying to sell the same thing, we've only got two ways of out, uh, out, out, out selling those people, okay? If we're all selling the same thing, we have no unique value proposition. We have two ways of outselling them. One is we sell it for less than them, okay? Or we spend more money on marketing. Both of those end up with the same outcome, which is less money in your in your pocket, Okay. So if the levers that we're using in our business is price, then we're going to be in a lot of trouble, okay? We definitely need to be competitively priced, but if that's the reason people are buying from you, it's a race to the bottom. So what we need to try and think about of having a successful, sustainable, long-term e-commerce business is what makes our business different to theirs. Okay? And that's something that is really hard to overcome, uh, to get by, but it's something once you nail it, you're going to do really, really well, okay? Try not to be the price fighter uh, because eventually they'll be able, unless you're getting, you know, you're the, the, the only person in the world that can get it for the cheapest, then you can beat them on price. 
uh, which is, you know, that means you pay for to buy thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of units, but you need to be a unique person in that market, okay? All right, the next one is, is you always test mobile. Please do this, write this down. Always test mobile. Please test mobile. I'll just let that sink in for a little bit. Always test mobile, right? One story happened last week, actually. Uh, one of our elite clients was like, man, my conversion rate sucks right now. I don't know what it is. And we couldn't work it out. And anyway, we went on mobile and he'd implemented this little chat bot that comes up and puts a little chat thing on there and it covered the checkout button on mobile. So no one could check out on mobile. So he was screwed. And if you think about it, like 90% of the people are coming in on mobile. But he wasn't looking at mobile because we were looking around desktop. Please check mobile. Yeah. Okay. Guess what happened when he fixed it? Conversion rates went up and he made money. I think he did like 100K after that. It was wild. Uh, next one. Use a paid Shopify theme. All right. This is a, this might be contentious for some people. Please use a paid Shopify theme. Now, they're not, they're not cheap, right? They're a couple hundred dollars. But imagine you use a Dawn or something like that. And, you know, I got no qualms against Dawn. It's a good theme. It's great out of the box sort of theme. The problem is when you want to start leveling up and doing things, you're going to have to pay someone to, to do it or you're going to have to use an app. And that's great, but that costs money too, right? So it's better off spending a little bit more now to save it in the long term because buying a theme that has all the features in it is fantastic because it has all the features in it. You don't need to go and pay for apps to do that. You don't need to hire developers. But the second winner is if something doesn't work so well on your theme, you just ask the developer of that theme because you paid them, they have to support you, okay? So as much as it feels like, oh my gosh, I have to spend $300 on this theme, long-term, you're going to be saving money. I promise you that. You have updates to new themes. You get all the new features. Uh, you've got access to a developer that can help you. All the apps work with it. It's not bloated. There's, there's more reasons than I can even think about why you should invest in a theme, okay? You're starting a business. We need to invest a little bit of money in it, right? There's a reality of that. It's not a free business. Uh, the other one is use apps for a reason, okay? I'll often jump on calls with people and they'll be like, oh, what apps can make me, what apps, what are, what are the good apps, right? That's, you know, what do you want to try, what are you trying to do? You, there's no good apps, right? We need to think about what we're trying to achieve. And the app is the thing that enables something we're trying to do. So we want to think about what is it we're trying to do and then find an app that can do it, Okay. What are we trying to what are we trying to do and what is an app that can do it? There's an example for that is, you know, I want to add upsells to my products. Okay? Great. Now we know what we want to do. We can find an app that does it the way you want to do it, right? I want to uh, add reviews to my products. Okay, great. Now we find an app that does it. Not just what are the best apps. That is a that is a question like saying what's the best car. Okay? Because you might need a van to to, you know, carry stock to the store or you might need a a Porsche because you like to do track days on the weekends. That's the outcome that you need to think about and then find the tool that does it. Hopefully that lands for you guys. And then this is the one, I'm gonna harp on this a little bit, but we wanna have an about us and an easy contact page, okay? People buy from people, yeah? People buy from people. And if you look at some of the biggest brands in the world, they're all people-led, creator-led, you know the founder. Yeah, we tend to hide behind our e-commerce business and not be the face of it or not at least put some humanity behind it, okay? When I go to buy something, I want to know that I'm buying from someone that's a little bit trustworthy, a little bit reputable. People buy from people, but they buy more from people they trust. So I really like an About Us page, put a photo on it, say why you started the store, be proud of yourself. You're doing it for a reason. Could be as reason as, you know, I'm working a full-time job and I just want to try and make an extra income so I can send my kids to ballet, right? Or something like that. That's okay. People resonate with that. They feel you. Don't be ashamed of like starting this e-com store. Be proud of it. Really important. Stores that have stories behind them, convert. Okay. So you can do that easily. About us page and an easy way for them to contact you. Okay. Humanity. People buy from people. All right. So that's setting up your site team. Hopefully you've written that down. Uh, one takeaway from that, guys, that you can employ into your store right now. And by the way, these takeaways you're writing down, by the end of today, you can go and do these. These are all super easy. One thing that you've taken away from setting up your site. About us. Yeah. Okay. One thing that you could take away. Create a new theme. Yep. 
play around with themes. The cool thing about the Pay Triplify themes is you can use them for free until you publish them. So you can install them, play around with them, adjust them, do everything like that. Yeah, remove shop. Yes, please, Nikhil, go for it. Um, yeah, how do you get around doing updates? Shop? Okay, that's a tech question. I'll, uh, I'll leave that to someone else to answer that one. Uh, SEO banner keywords. Yes, Matt, absolutely clear offer, Jackie. Yes, yes. Awesome, team. Feels like we're getting a lot of value out of this. All right, let's go to the next piece of the puzzle, getting your SEO right. All right, SEO is dear to my heart. I like it. I've been in SEO for a long time um, and I just like it. I don't know why I do. And that's, don't, don't judge me. Okay, so we use SEMrush uh, and we use it to get the right keywords, all right? Now, SEO always starts with the right keywords and I've just put a link to SEMrush there because you can get a trial um, for seven days. A lot of you have probably seen my video, but um, for the size of the stores we have, the trial is absolutely perfect. That link will get you the, I think it might even be 14 days now, but seven to 14 days, you get a free trial. But if you just don't pay for it, you get it forever. It's like this little hack that you can do. But choosing the right keywords is super important. And I want you to think about this is don't choose the keywords you think they are. Choose the keywords that people are using. And what SEMrush does is you just type in, say, um, you know, kids wooden toys, and it will come up with a whole heap of results for what people are searching for in that category. So you might find actually searching for a, a, a kid's wooden truck or it might be a kid's wooden bus. And that's the keywords that we want to play with is the ones that people search for. And SEMrush can help you do that, okay? There's a little part there that's called the keyword magic tool. And you type in what you think people are searching for and it will tell you what they're actually searching for, okay? We have to start with keywords first because if we put the wrong keywords in our page, Google's not going to understand what our page is about. But we, if we put the wrong keywords on, uh, there's another side of it is we want to make sure our keywords have intent in them, okay? So if we think about the wooden truck example, if it had something like how to make a kid's wooden truck, that's completely different from buying a kid's wooden truck, okay? Two different intents in those searches. So we want to make sure that we're putting keywords in our page that have the right intent, which is like a commercial intent. Is that landing for everyone? Yeah, got that? So keywords are super important. We need to start with that first. Then SEO comes in from there. The second thing is we want to make sure that this keyword is on the page that you want to rank for and it needs to be in the H1 or the title of that page. So that's in the heading as well as the page title. We can do that all in Shopify pretty easily. Okay, if you can have it in the product title. So, you know, it might be a, you might just say kids wooden truck is your title, right? Don't get fancy. Just put it in there. Perfect. Um, the next part is we want to make sure that we focus not just on product pages, but our collection pages. Now, collection pages are a lot easier to rank than product pages. So the way we like to do it is we have our H1 title, which is like kids' wooden trucks. We'll have a description, which is, uh, I think it's the next one. Yep, keyword rich text, which a description which has something that talks about the, the trucks, but it also has links in there as well. Okay, and then we have all the products that go in that collection. Collection pages are a lot easier to rank. If you've got a one or two product store, then that's okay. We can we can just try and rank a product page. But the goal is that if you can focus on collection pages, please do, uh, because that drives person to that one page and they can then see all your products as opposed to landing on one product, then they see the one thing. So we want to focus on collection pages. The next part is we want to add alt tags and rename images. We use a tool. I don't actually have the link for this. Sorry, Christine, I didn't give you this one. Uh, we actually have a tool which is called uh, it's it's an app actually, Hextum Bulk Product Updater. So you just go in the, the Shopify App Store. It's Hextum, H-E-X-T-O-M, Bulk Product Updater. And this allows you to do this en masse because what we want to do is we want to use those keywords, but we want to not only put it in the text, we want to put it on the images, but not actually on the images in the background where our Google searches for it. So we want to update the alt tags on images and rename the images with those keywords. Now that app I gave you, will do it for you. Okay. Thank you, Christine, for writing that in there. It's an app. Oh, there we go. That was fast. Thank you very much. All right, cool. Uh, and then another one is keywords in internal links. Okay. So you might see on the big stores, aka, uh, oh, you could look on my stores. You could. Uh, we've got like a, a collection description on there and we'll put links inside that collection description. But those links will be related to what we're talking about. So if, we, if we've got kids wooden trucks, we might also have a link in there that's like, kids wooden cars. We might have kids wooden houses or kids wooden garage and their internal links that we have in our collection pages that link to the other collections. Okay. So if someone lands on that, there's a chance they're going to want those other things, but that's not just for the customer. It also signals to Google that you just sell more than that thing. Really powerful. Okay. Really, really powerful linking between pages. And then 
the final part to this. Oh, there's two, two more to go on this. Um, we want to get other sites to link to you where you can. And this is what we call backlinking. This is where we could reach out to our networks, our communities, and get them to link back to us. We can send products to people to write uh, to write blogs about our products. But we want to get as many sites as we can to link to us. Okay, really powerful thing. What that does is that signals to the search engines that other people think that your site is okay. Right? If your just site just sits there by itself, no one else points to it, then it's not going to have the best chance have your best chance of ranking. And then the last thing, a little hack. Uh, I don't know if anyone's done this, but you submit your sitemap.xml. It's a little bit techy. There, uh, I will. I'm actually going to create a YouTube video about this. But um, submit your sitemap XML. Has anyone done that? Type in the chat if you've done that. Yes, 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 yes. A couple of you. So what a sitemap is, just for you guys. Shopify has it built in, so you don't have to do anything techy. You go to something called Google Search Console, and there's a section there. There's a button that says sitemap, and you just send your sitemap to that. And what that does is that tells Google it's like a map of every single page on your site, everything that you've ever done on your site get sent to Google instantly, which means it doesn't have to go out and find it itself. You've just given it all the information. The cool thing about doing it via this is if you add a new page or a new blog or a new product, it automatically goes into Google, okay? It just does it for you. You don't need to think about it. Super simple way of doing it. So that's sort of your SEO team. If you haven't written it down, I'll put it back up there. Feel free to fill it out. But if we can get these things right, these is planting our seeds, getting our vines ready so we can grow grapes. We can, we can harness the wine. Uh, for those of you that I think some of you already done it, but we do have an SEO for Shopify course. It's just there if you want to jump on and do that. Um, a lot of fun. It's about, I don't know, 10 videos or something, but we go through this in, in real depth on exactly how to do it, where to put the things, how to do the things. SEO is really fun. Takes a lot of time, takes a lot of patience. Uh, takes like 12 months to get a result, which is why we're saying doing it now before we've even done any ads because we want to plant the seeds. Team. What are we loving about SEO? One thing that you can put into your store right now, okay? We've got some product stuff. We're doing some site stuff. What are we going to do about SEO? One, one thing that you can take away and do in your store right away. Internal linking, internal linking. Such a simple one. Absolutely. Yeah. Links between collect. Yeah, I love that. Great. Excellent. Such an easy one to do. H1 titles. Check them all. The good thing about using a paid theme, Jackie, is typically... No, every time they are SEO friendly. You don't even need to think about H1 titles are already in there. Text them app. Yeah, internal links. Awesome. Feel like we've got a few things that we can implement there. All right, let's keep running down this road, right? We're on our, on our trail to 10K. Oh, actually, we've got an ad break. <laughs> Forgot I did this. Uh, obviously, for boot campers, you can just go and grab a coffee. Uh, but the idea here is if we're getting some guests in, it's not a free lunch, guys. I've got to have to do a quick ad break, ad break here. It's like you see on YouTube, you just straight into a video and then we cut to an ad. That's just what we're doing here. I'll keep it super quick because I know we want to learn some stuff here. But for those of you that aren't in boot camp, I want to just take you through what we work on. Um, actually, those that are in boot camp, just write in the chat to say, Tell me what, tell us what you think about bootcamp. You can be honest if you hate it, say you hate it. If you love it, say you love it. Um, but I'd love to hear from you guys. But basically bootcamp is super simple. We uh, break up into a number of modules. We have the bootcamp module. We have uh, an email engine room. We have bonus training. And then every week we have live calls just like this. This is one of our live calls for the bootcampers. So, so thank you to those people who are patiently hearing me in the ad break. We don't usually have ads in these. Um, so that's sort of the first thing. The second thing is we have this killer community that we only launched about a month ago and we've got nearly 80, 85, 90 people in there now. And like, this is the most active community I've ever been in, right? This is wild. Everyone's in there asking for help, getting a site audits, asking for tech. Like, it's just really cool. The community is helping each other grow and we're all growing together and everyone's like graduating and making all the money. It's like really, really cool. Um, yeah, Maria, bootcamp keeps you accountable. hundred percent. Is it for newbies that earn $0? Uh, Yes, it is. You just need to have a store is the, is the prerequisite. Uh, and then the bootcamp itself, um, this is all the modules that are in it. So we go through basically everything that we're talking about today. We just go through the fine tooth comb, everything that's in it. It's so much fun. Uh, and I love, I have a lot of fun doing it. So um, that's all what it is. It's me talking, but think about my YouTube videos, but on steroids. Okay. Now I do want to do a little quick offer here for you guys. It's usually $199 a month. Um, you can start anytime, quit at any time. It's no lock-in contract. You just, it's a month by month subscription. But for you guys today, I feel like I'm selling steak knives. Uh, we've got $99, right? If you guys join today, Christine's put the link in there. The only problem is I'm only gonna do that for 48 hours because uh, as you can see, we've got a team around us. We've got Gab, we've got Christine, we've got Alana. I got to pay them to do this stuff. So that's the reason I can't do it for long. Otherwise 
they don't have a job. Um, that's pretty much it. We just put a team around you. So that's why we we charge that. I wish I could do it for free. Uh, that's why I make YouTube videos. But uh, unfortunately, well, no, fortunately, I need to pay this amazing team. But yeah, that's that's the only reason we charge for it. So if you want to join next 48 hours, $99 a month, quit at any time. Uh, if you don't like it, you can leave. That's absolutely fine. Um, I think everyone that is commenting uh, like it. Hey, boot campers, do you want to give a bit of encouragement to get in on that? Get in on it, get in on the fun. <laughs> uh, awesome. All right, team, that's the ad. Oh, that's the ad done. Let's let's get over it. All right, so let's get into email marketing. Um, I wanted to try and make that ad 30 seconds so I was like a television commercial, but I don't know if I made it. All right, so we're going to get into email marketing now. Uh, email marketing is one of those unspoken things and just it feels like it's this unsexy thing that no one ever speaks about. And I'm just so bullish on it. Like, it's ridiculous. And anyone that you speak to that has been in any of my programs, all I talk about is email marketing. And the reason being is you just send you send an email and 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 people give you money. Like I don't understand. Like I don't understand it. So um, I think about all the large brands I worked in. We this was the thing. Fifty percent of our revenue came from our email marketing. It's why you guys get spam in your junk box, right? Because it it, it works. Okay, you get spam in your junk box because every email it sends makes money. Okay, so I want you guys to learn that. And I want you to learn it early in this in this journey. So we're going to break, give you two strategies that we can play in here. All right, two strategies. The first one, oh, first thing is please use Clavio. I know it costs a little bit of money. Actually, up to five hundred users or two hundred and fifty subscriptions, it's free. Um, I think we've actually got a link for a free trial. If you want to chuck that in there, if you could, Christine. Um, if you haven't used in Clavio, grab sign up to this. It's free for two hundred and fifty. You only need to pay when you go over it. Um, but Clavio is super powerful. It's been designed just for e-commerce and it's even owned half of it by Shopify. So the integration is like next level. If you're using Shopify marketing, this is going to change your world. All right. So the first thing that we think about is um, running email campaigns. Okay. So campaigns are sometimes referred to as newsletters. These are the things that you send out regularly to people. Okay. These are the things that we send out regularly. So I want you to keep it simple. We only want to send one to two emails per week. Who's this guy calling me? Uh, one to two emails per week, okay? Um, the second thing we want to do is we want to make sure we use the templates that are in Clavio, okay? There's templates in there that are already and use them. Don't go out and design things from scratch. Just do it simple. Those templates have been designed. They're great, okay? And we just want to keep it simple. Don't over-design. Don't put thousands of products in an email. Keep it super simple, super straightforward, super clean. And finally... We want to make sure we have a good combination of emails of giving information and asking for the sale. Okay. Uh, a little thing that we like to say is we give three emails to one ask. So we want to give information, give information, give information, say, hey, do you want to buy something from us? And the reason we do that is that we are nurturing the customer for them to trust us so that when we ask for them, they will buy it. It also means they're more likely to open the email if we're not always trying to sell to them. One of our highest converting emails every week, every single week is our blog email. We send a blog out that we write every week in our store. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. Okay. Blog email. So that's the first thing. The second thing is flows. Okay. Flows are email automations that go out based on certain events that happen. Flows are one of those things that when you're in bed at night and a flow gets sent out at term in the morning, makes you money, you wake up and you got a sale from an email. Right? You didn't do anything. You just set it up and it did its thing. So we, we recommend three super simple flows. These are all templates in Klaviyo. You just need to turn them on and put your logo on. Welcome series, killer flow. Second flow is abandoned checkout. You need to have that. That's the one that when someone comes to your store, we're going to talk about how to pay for them to get there. If they don't buy something, we want to grab the information so we can talk to them again. The abandoned checkout is the one that does that. And the final one is thank you. Okay. We want to thank people for being our customers. Why would we do that? Why do you want to thank them? They've spent money with us. Let's thank them. We thank them so they come back again. It's much easier to get a customer to come back than to get a new one. Okay. We want to build that rapport. They've taken their time out of their day to click your link, buy your thing. You can surely say thank you. But we can automate that, right? The, that's all you need to think about at Clavio. One to two emails per week. Use the templates. Keep it simple. Don't always ask for their money. Set up a welcome flow, abandon checkout, and a thank you email. Super simple, all right? Team, Clavio, what are we thinking? Write in the chat one thing you took from that little uh, little snippet there. One little thing. What are you going to do differently in your email marketing? 
Or are you going to start email marketing is probably what I should ask there. <laughs> Give and ask, 100%, Brian, 100%. Flows, importance of a thank you, 100%. We actually do our thank yous in real text. It's got no logos, got nothing on it. And the thank you goes a little bit something like this. Uh, hey, Tim, thanks so much. I just got a notification from my warehouse team that you bought something from us yesterday. I just wanted to reach out personally. I'm the, I'm the CEO here. I just want to say thanks so much for placing that order. It's people like you that really make our business great and, and why we keep doing what we do. Thanks a lot, Brendan. That's all we do. Don't ask for anything else. Right? Super simple. Imagine you got that email. You'd be, you'd be like, wow, this guy reached out of his day to send me an email. 100%. All right. Uh, that's the free Clavier account. All right. So this is the part where now we've got everything set up. The world is good. We've got our product page. We've got our site. We've got everything ready to go, right? Now we're going to use ads. And I want you to think of ads as the fuel to your business. It's the fuel to growing your business. So if, you're, if you've got a bad business, it's the fuel that burns your business down. If you've got a good business, it's the fuel that grows your business, all right? So this is the part where we don't put ads on until we're happy that our store is ready to go, okay? And I'm really important about this because bad businesses can get burnt by ads if we don't do it right. So there's two ad types that we use at this level. The first one is capturing someone's demand. So when someone wants to buy something, they have a demand, right? I need a new cap, maybe a different color one day. I might not wear a black one. Maybe I'm going to... Go crazy and wear a green one. So I'm going to look for a green hat. Where am I going to go to do that? I'm going to go to Google, okay? I'm going to go straight into Google to look for the thing that I want. What should we do there when we go to Google? We should put an ad in front of them selling a green hat because they're already ready to buy. Their intention is high and ready to buy. This is what we call demand capture. We capture the demand of someone that wants something. We give it to them. It's pretty simple. Someone wants something, you have it, we make a relationship in Google Ads. That's all we're doing. And AI makes it really easy, and we just recommend launching a Google Pmax campaign, right? If you've never done it before, when you go into Google Ads, this is like, it couldn't be easier these days. Like, anyone can do this. You go in there, create campaign, choose Google Pmax, fill out the fields, press go. That's all we do. Simple, okay? Uh, I do have a YouTube video on how to do that. Feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely a YouTube video there that will show you how to do it. Uh, we also obviously cover in depth that in the bootcamp. Uh, the second ad that you need is where we create the demand, right? So it's all well and good that we capture the demand. That's great. But, you know, that's not really scalable because we need, you know, we need people to want to buy the thing for them to have the demand for the thing. So we need to now create the demand. So the way we do that is we need to put our products in front of people that might be interested, but not might be ready to buy, okay? And I'm sure you guessed it, but we're gonna do that via meta ads. Because what do most people do on the internet when they're not shopping, right? They're social media. They're on social media. They're on Instagram, they're on Facebook. Yes, they're on TikTok and all the other players, X and things like that. But we know the, the channels that convert are the visual channels, right? And we know that Instagram converts. We know that Facebook converts. TikTok does it a bit, but people don't like to be sold to on TikTok unless you're running a TikTok shop. That's another day's session. Meta ads, you've got to do it because we can put visually what our product looks like in front of them and we can tell a little bit more of a story and why they need our product. Two ad types that you guys are going to set up here. We just run through the... the, the, the um, Steps when you do it, create a campaign and fill this out. We want to do a sales-based campaign and we call it a CBO. That's called a campaign budget optimization. And the reason we do that is when we create our ads, we don't know which ad's going to work, right? We're going to try a few ads. I'm going to give you some examples for those that st stuck around. I promised you that. We don't know what ads are going to work. So we're just saying, hey, hey, Facebook, here's some money. I want you to just av average the spend out across these ads and just spend more on the ones that work, okay? So that's what campaign budget optimization does. We could put five ads in there, put 50 bucks in there. It's not going to spend $10 on each ad. It's going to say, oh, this ad's working. I'm going to spend all my money on that, okay? Because that means it gets you more sales. And that means you don't need to be in ads and adjusting things and changing audiences and doing all that. The stuff that people try and tell you you need to do. That's the first ad. The second one is what we call a catalog style ad. And this is where we feed our catalog into Facebook and it shows our products to people and they click and buy, right? It's called a catalog ad. You would have seen it. It's like a little carousel that goes across and you see people's products in there. It's a killer ad. Works really well. The cool thing about it is 
it's dynamic and it puts the products in front of the people. So if someone visits your store and they look at the green hat, finally, when you go on Facebook or Instagram, you see an ad for the green hat, don't you? That's what this does. That's the retargeting style ad. Okay. So they're the ads that we, we, we need to get started on Facebook ads. Now we would have been here for an hour just learning one of those ads, but all this can be found on YouTube, right? Either by me or Nick or whoever, whoever else is on there that does kill ads. Feel free to do that, but don't get over complicated ads, make them super clean and simple because the more simple they are, the easier you understand them. All right. I'm going to take you through some ad examples in a second, but what do we find useful about this whole ads thing? Give me, give me one thing that you can take away from this. One thing you take away from ads, capturing demand, creating demand, Pmax, meta. What are we doing? One thing you can take away. Once it's set up, works day and night. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Yep, 100%. The other thing, just a little snippet I didn't put in here, uh, don't kill the ads too early. Okay, this is a really important one. Someone will run an ad for two days and be like, oh, it's not working and stop it. Don't do that. That's bad. Okay. Think about, you have to think in the way if someone's going to buy something. Not everyone's in the mood to buy something every single day. Okay. And not everyone buys Monday to Friday, right? So we need to give the ad a good, at least seven day cycle to go through a full sort of financial process of someone's world. Okay. If we turn an ad off in three days, but person was ready to buy on the fourth day. We've lost that sale and we're starting over again. We just continue to rerun our race. Okay. Cool. Capture and demand. Excellent. Excellent. Oh. Oh, also, thank you to those that have um, joined the bootcamp. <laughs> I didn't realize you guys had signed up so early. So thank you very much. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay. And Google Shopping. So uh, Brian, Google Shopping is built into Pmax. So that, thank you for bringing that up as one last thing I wanted to talk about. The reason we love Pmax is Pmax does all the things. Okay. So if you start a Pmax campaign, it advertises on Google search, it advertises in Google Shopping, it advertises in Google Mail, it advertises on YouTube, it advertises in Display, it advertises on Articles, just by creating the one ad. It does all those things for you. Whereas in the old days, we need to build six campaigns out to do that. Pmax does it all. Okay. That's why we should do it. Uh, Yes, Tim eBay ads can also be good. Uh, that's a that's a side masterclass, I think, that one. But yeah, well done. Cool. Uh, Justine, confused between CBO and catalog. We might have time for questions. We'll ask that at the end of the, the masterclass. All right, so it's all well and great to say, hey, guys, go and make these ads, right? Uh, but I'm going to give you three ads that we know work and work really well, and they're going to be really easy for you guys to do. So I want to make sure it's really simple and easy for you guys. So... This is the bonus I talked about and what creative to use. Uh, and I'll get um I'll get Christine to track the links to these so you can view them. But we use a tool, we use a tool called Foreplay. Trust me, it's an ad tool, not a site that you shouldn't visit. You'll be allowed to visit it at work. Uh, it's called Foreplay, and it basically allows you to look at the ads of other brands and see what they're doing really well. And then you can save the ad and refer it to next time. Now I know there's a Facebook, you, some of you might be aware of the Facebook ads library. You can go in and search for a brand and see what ads are running. Problem is, once they stop the ads, those ads go away and you don't see them anymore. Whereas with Foreplay, you can save the ad and keep it there so you can have it for reference. But what we've done is we've created Foreplay boards for you of all the ads that we like at the moment, and you guys get free access to that so you can jump in. So these are going to be the links that we have here. Um, Christine, just send them the links to our ads if you could. That would be easier. Um, cool. So the way it works is we've got three ads we want you to play with. The first one is an us versus them ad. This is a great ad. I love these ones the best, right? Because this is one of those things as why should they choose you, okay? So this is a great example uh, from Keto Chow. Uh, them, they created you know, a big protein thing. They say all the bad things that about them and they say all the good things about you. Super simple ads. So when you see something like this, think about your product. Why should they buy yours over theirs? So this is calling out their negatives and amplifying your positives. Really simple, really easy ad. You can do that in Canva. Canva has templates for this. You can just jump in there and copy it, right? Shouldn't take you very long. Killer ad. So, so simple. So simple. The second style ad we recommend, features and outcomes. Again, this is just product shots. We don't need to go out there and get models and all those sorts of things. Um, it's easy. Just put the product in there. And then the benefits that we talked about in the product description, we just put on here, Okay. So have these little call outs. Now, the cool thing about doing this ad is that when you put the product descriptions, oh, thank you. I just, so I keep getting distracted by people joining bootcamp. I'll just move that out of my way. Um, 
when we put in the product descriptions, our benefits, if we have that on our ad, when someone clicks the ad and they see the benefits there, they land on the product and they see the, the product descriptions there, they, um, there's a congruency, right? They know they're in the right place, right? So we want to make sure the benefits on the ad match the benefits on the product page. Does that make sense? Yeah, there's a congruency. Oh, that told me it would do this thing. I land on the product page that also says it will do this thing. Great, I'm good. I'm good to go. I agree. Uh, so features and outcomes. Super simple, super easy ad. We've been, we've, we run one of these on one of our boxing glove products. And it just, we've been running it for like, I don't know, five months. And it just keeps making sales. Super simple ad. Super simple. And then the last one, another easy one. It's a good one. I love these ones. So these are really fun. Called the negative marketing ads. Has anyone ever seen these ones? Negative marketing, where you actually say the reason why they shouldn't buy the product because of the good thing that the product does. Right? So it'd be hard to see on this screen, but this one is basically the Ridge wallet. And it says, why you'll regret to buy this wallet. Uh, it's too slim. I can't even feel it in my pocket, right? That's the benefit of that thing, right? People want it because it is slim and it fits in your pocket and you have this big stack of, uh, stack of a big wallet. I don't know um, if there's anyone that remembers Seinfeld. Uh, do you remember the episode of Seinfeld? George Costanza had this big, thick wallet. And when you're sitting on the thing, you're always sitting sideways. It always reminds me of that ad when I see that. Um, so yeah, these negative marking ones are great. I see a true classic do this really well. And I think we've got a couple of those in our little example ads there, but basically, um, they have one where, you know, my girlfriend hates these t-shirts that I wear because it makes me look too good. And all the other girls look at me, right? My friends, my, uh, I had to quit my gym membership when I bought this t-shirt because it already makes me look buff and I don't need to work out. So it's all these negative things, right? So we talk about, we think about the benefit of the product and by that benefit, what negative would it bring to you, your world? It's a really interesting ad style. And it's one of those really ones that sort of, you know, clicks your mind and be like, oh, that's so interesting. And it gets your attention, okay? So yeah, we've got some pretty cool examples on those. Um, I might just give you a quick look on how this little notion thing, or the little foreplay thing works, just so that uh, you can see what I mean. Just wait for it to load up. But yeah, foreplay is a great tool to use if you haven't done it. Um, you know, I think there's a free account. But yeah, so as an example, this is sort of how it looks. Just zoom in a little bit. So basically what we've done is we've given you a whole heap of things, but you can see all these different examples of different ads. They're so cool. Us versus them. Um, yeah, so give, this should give you lots of ideas for ads because an ad is, um, a Facebook ad is only as good as it's creative. And what we want to be doing is continually testing our creative to make sure that, you know, it's actually working, right? So the it's not that Facebook doesn't work for you, it's that your ads aren't, your creative is not working, okay? So we wanna make sure that you've got the good creative that goes to a good site, that's congruent, that has a great offer, okay? Is that helpful, those are ads, guys? We're finding something useful about those uh, because I'm doing it after every section. What was the useful thing about those ads or that we found or that little feature, that little thing that we did for you? What was useful about that for you guys? Ideas, 100%, Tim. Ideas. All the things, seeing what works. Yep, give your ideas. Yep, exactly. So all we think about when we do ads is what's the next ad we can test, okay? So our goal is just to test as many ads as possible to see what work. When one works, we just keep it on. When one doesn't work, we just turn it off and we start again. But we learn something from the thing that didn't work. So let's just say we did a negative marketing ad and it was about something and it didn't work, then we wouldn't do that negative. It doesn't mean negative marketing ads don't work. Maybe it was just that message doesn't work. So we'll try a different one. We'll try a different one. We might take one from one ad, try it, join them together, try different colors. We're always just testing, testing different ads. All right, team. So the final thing that I want to take you guys through is how we scale. Now this gets, this is the techie bit. I know I promised to start, we weren't getting too techie, but sometimes I get a little bit techie. I can't help myself. This is the formula for scale, okay? It looks complicated, but it's actually ridiculously simple. This is the, 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 the model that I use. Basically, we say, what's our average order value times our purchase frequency, okay? That's our, that's our first thing. And then we, we, we divide that by our, our gross margin of our product. So let's just say, I'm gonna try and make this sound simple. Let's just say I sell a product for $100. Someone buys that two times every three months, we'll say. That means over three months, they spend $200 with me because they've bought a $100 product twice. Everyone following along, right? My margin on that product is 50%. So that means over three month period, I've made $100 on that, on that sale. Does that all make sense? Yep. So three months, 
They bought twice from me, spent $200, I made $100. If they just bought once from me, I'd only make $50, okay, from my margin because it's a 50% margin. Now, by knowing that number, right, knowing that in three months' time, this one customer is going to be worth $100 to me, I can then start to think about how much I am willing to spend to get more customers like that, right? If I know that every customer that I get is going to be worth $200 to me in three months, I'm willing to spend a certain amount of money to get that. So I'd probably spend up to $50 to get a hundred dollars in my bank account. Does everyone make sense? Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Right. So I know my margin, I know my purchase frequency, and that then gives me something that we call our CPA or our cost per acquisition, or sometimes we call it CAC, a customer acquisition cost. Okay. So that's the target that I'm working towards. So if I know my CPA, we say it's $50, I'll just say, right, I'm going to spend as much money as I can until those economics don't make any sense, until my CPAs go above $50. As long as my cost per acquisition is below $50, I can spend money and money will pop out the other end. Right? That's as simple as, as, as e-commerce is. We just need to know how much are we prepared to spend on acquiring a customer. But the only way we can get that number is if we know what that customer is worth to us. Now, if a customer only buys from you one time, then you have to work on that one-time profitability. But if you have a business where you have high repeat customers, then you can actually spend a little bit more upfront because you're investing in that long-term value. Does this making sense to everyone? Yeah. This is why subscription businesses are so popular. This is why consumable businesses are so popular. This is why we look at, this is why businesses add new products to their line all the time because they want to get the same customer to come back again. Because by this metric, we can see that getting a customer back a second time is free. Getting them the first time, we had to pay for them. So this is the secret to e-commerce is understanding how much you're prepared to pay to get a customer and then just spend until that doesn't make any sense anymore. And if we think back to where we talked about the difference in being a low cost business versus a high margin business, this is where having a big margin wins because imagine my margins were 90%, right? I now have $90 to spend times two on marketing if I wanted to, yeah? So this is how we scale. It's a very simple formula. Once you nail it, it takes a little bit of time then your business will just grow. We're just putting money in and it comes out until it doesn't make any sense, okay? So hopefully that makes uh, a little bit of sense. We, we talk about that getting past 10K. And the reason we do that is because you need the metrics of all the other stuff you've done to be able to make an assessment on how much is it gonna cost me to acquire a customer? How much is the customer worth to me? How frequently are they purchasing? What can I do to make them purchase more frequently? Um, once we know that, then our goal is to get them to buy more frequently from us, okay? Because if they buy more frequently, we can spend more upfront. Okay. Is that an interesting model? Does anyone, tell me what you think about that in the chat. I'd love to hear what people think about that. Perfecto. Your Italian's perfecto. Yeah. It's the hard mindset to change. Absolutely. It's logical. It is. Hard to get right though. Okay. It's hard to get right. I make it sound simple, but it's hard to get right. PF is purchase frequency. Okay. Your, so your goal as an e-commerce person to win at e-commerce is really good margins. This is It's like this is the holy grail. Have really good margins and have people buy from you regularly. If you can get that, you've you got a ticket to print, right? Now, if you don't have a product that gets people to buy regularly, what other products can you introduce to do it? This is why fashion houses will be doing releases every quarter. Every season, fashion people, put fashion brands put out new products, right? To get them to buy again from you. That's why we release new products. We just release one product and expect people to buy again. Um, they're not going to. That's why we've got to make them read. We've got to stimulate them. And we've got to think about the world we put out there. We've got now emails. We need to send our email people new products, get them to come back. Yeah. So purchase frequency is key. Understanding average order value, understanding your margins. That's that's sort of the secret to getting past 10K to a million dollars. All right. I have gone over time a little. Sorry, team. I get excited. But we might have time. If people want to stick around, I'll stick around for another sort of five or so minutes for Q&A. If those of you that want to go, you can. I'll be sad to see you go, but I want to say thank you very much for, for jumping on board. Um, hopefully there's been one or two takeaways here that you guys can put into your store. Just don't overcomplicate it. Start with the product pages and then work away up into ads, okay? Don't spend money until you know you're ready, right? But obviously you need to spend money to actually grow your store. So it's this bit of chicken and egg scenario, okay? We need to grow our store by putting fuel on it, but we don't want to put fuel on a bad store. Okay, because we burn it down. Hopefully that is helpful. Uh, thank you to everyone that has already joined the bootcamp. Like I said, 48 hours till that uh, goes to 199. Um, if you want to jump on, jump on. We've got a superstar team in here. 
Um, but yeah, let's do some Q&A, team. Uh, we had a couple that came in. Uh, if you want to write in the chat your question, um, while though you guys are coming up, the ones that are sticking around, I'm going to answer one of the questions that was up before. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Let me go back up. There's too many comments. Uh, okay, so confused about CBO and catalog, Justine said. So CBO is campaign budget optimization. So that's a different ad type. And basically what that does is that's where we'll put our us versus them ads uh, or our feature ads or our negative marketing ads. And what, what that is, that's a creative style. So we pay, we say, look, we'll spend $50 a day on that on those ads. And we want Facebook to go and put those ads in front of people and tell us which ones work. That's the campaign budget optimization where we use the creative we talked about. Catalog, all that does is that grabs the pictures of your products from your store and puts them on Facebook and advertises them. So you don't need to do any creative for that one. So that's a really, uh, really simple one. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, Tran asks, do we do Facebook and Google Max at the same time? Yes, we do. Because they feed each other, right? It feeds each other. You're creating demand in Facebook. People are like, oh my gosh, what are those wallets? I'm sure someone else has those wallets. What do they do? They go to Google, super slim wallet. Boom, your ad pops up. Now they've seen you once, they see you twice. There, we've got this congruency happening there. That's, that's why we do both, absolutely. Yeah. And then this other secret weapon to that is, is that if they find you on Google and they click your ad, you've now pixeled them and they then get your catalog ad on Facebook or Instagram and they go back. So it's this beautiful circular thing that happens. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, thanks, Gab. You answered that question already. <laughs> Just saying that. Let me tell in the comments. Uh, all right, let's go a few other ones. All right, how do you, uh, let me find a goodie that helps everyone. Do you still follow this roadmap when trying to review an established store? Yes, absolutely. I review this roadmap on my stores all the time. We're constantly iterating product pages, constantly, all the time. We're constantly tweaking. This part where we call conversion rate optimization, where we're going in and going, okay, maybe we'll move that around. Maybe we'll change the price. Maybe we'll change the colors. Absolutely. Collection pages, merchandising all the time. There's actually a role in a large e-commerce store. At least have a team of these people. They're called merchandise coordinators, right? And they have one for every collection. So if you have a big store, you know, thousands of products, you actually have people that sit there every day and merchandise the collection pages, right? To make sure when you land on it, you've got the best sellers at the top, you don't have out of stocks, then what are the right products on there? So absolutely, you do that on established stores. Um, email, obviously, we've got to continue to grow that. So yes, we're doing that. SEO is an ongoing game, 100%. We should revisit this every month. It just means that you're doing it at a bigger level. All right, Um uh, and with selling fashion, should I be reducing prices for each different season change? Look, pricing strategies are different based on your business. Uh, if you need to clear the stock out, yes, of course. If you need to free up cash, absolutely. That's why we have outlets. That's why there's these outlets out there, right? Because they need to clear through stock to make way for the new stock. And we need to turn that stock into cash. So definitely. Um, for work on product pages with an understanding of SEO, should I go back and edit copy once I know what the keywords are? Or should I learn what the keywords are first? Um, learn the keywords and then go back and change it. Yeah. Uh, Brian, you have only one product with two flavors. That's cool. That's all right. Then we try and optimize the absolute, I'm trying not to swear, uh, just optimize that page as best you can. <laughs> yeah, Brian. So that is your, that is your page you want to rank, right? If you've got a, a single product page, just rank that one. So that should have more copy on it, should have more descriptions, it should have everything on it, as opposed to trying to drive them to those things. Can there be more than one H1 on a page, Pamela? No. That's the answer, the answer to that. Uh, if you need to put a second heading in, make it a H2, but we should only have one heading that is a priority heading, okay? How do you approach email marketing if you haven't touched base in here with your fans? Yep, Gab says, warm them up. Warm them up, absolutely. Uh, it's a really good one. Yeah. So to talk about reintroduce yourself and your brand, don't sell to them straight away, give them resources about hundred percent. So we want to, it's like, imagine you haven't spoken to a friend for a few years, right? Pick up the phone and you say, Hey Johnny, how are you going? Can I have something from you, please? That's it. That's what the email is like. Don't do that. Reintroduce them. Say, Hey, what have you been up to? This is what I've been doing. What do you think? That's what it's all about. Okay, reintroduce yourself in your brand. Don't sell them straight away. Give them something nice. Give, 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 then ask. Same applies when warming up your list. Also, 
Uh, we actually did have someone in our program that re-sparked their list. He went a little hard though. He did this thing, but he did like three in a week. And everyone's like, whoa, too many emails. So you you got to slowly introduce it back in. So it's like one a week, maybe even one a fortnight, and then slowly um, improve your cadence on that. All right. I'm loving the questions, guys. Thank you so much. What ad credit is the best? Videos versus image versus carousel. They are all have different purposes, Nikhil. So um, you need to try them all, and it's all testing. So we actually think, we actually think, we actually feel, feel and think together. We actually think that video ads have more of an upper funnel approach, right? So it's more broad and attracting people into your world. Image ads are a little bit more middle of funnel, and then catalog ads are a bit more bottom of funnel. So we actually like them all to be in congruence. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, how do you get around doing updates, Shopify, losing your... Oh, that's a hard question, Pamela. <laughs> uh, it depends on the theme and the updates that you've had done. So Pamela asked, if you've had a coder come in and change your theme around and you want to do the update, you tend to lose it. Um, yeah, that is a that is a drawback of getting custom code in, which says why we should use a paid theme that has all the features in it already. All right. Uh, thank you, Felix, very much for staying up late for us. Um, all right, we might go one or two more. Okay, so how about video ads, which are more informative, followed by static image creative ads? How long should the video be? And how should you boost a reel versus posting a video ad? Okay, don't boost reels, firstly, waste of money. Um, secondly, length is, again, this is all testing, right? Ads are just testing. Uh, I've seen videos that go for three minutes that crush. They go really, really well. But then I've seen some that go for 15 seconds that also crush. The key is, the key to any video ad is the first three seconds. We have to hook them in. And I think we're going to be putting something about hooks soon, aren't we, Gab? Is that right? Yeah. So you need to hook them in on um, on getting their attention. That's the hook rate. If, if you don't have a hook, it doesn't matter how long your video is because they're not going to watch it, right? So the hook is important. And the hook needs to identify the person that's watching the video. So for me, hey, do you like black hats? Right, I got my thing. Got my attention. Yeah, I like black hats, right? Or, um, you know... Is your dog suffering from anxiety? Got their attention, great. That's how we do it, it's the hook, okay? Um, so yeah, we wanna mix it up and test it out there. Hopefully that, that was helpful. Uh, Daria has a Wix store. Uh, please, yes, change to Shopify. I don't need to say anything more than that. <laughs> uh, Maria, yes, thank you, you're welcome. How would the page rank in the first page in Google? Um, so that is, Coming up with SEO, uh, this is from Hashem. So it takes time. It takes a lot of time and it depends how competitive your space is. So if you're trying to rank for white t-shirts, it's going to take you a lot of time because a lot of people are trying to rank for white t-shirts, right? So um, if that's like saying how, how long is a piece of string, will you ever get on first page? I can't guarantee that. But can you put his best uh, foot forward to do it? Absolutely. SEMrush is really good because it identifies how heavy the competition is and it helps you find keywords that are maybe not as competitive. Okay. Um, all right. I think we are at the end of the questions. I think I might do, I might do one more and then I might let you guys go. Da, 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 da. Okay. There's one about Clavio and subscriptions. All right. We'll do that last question. I think it'd be really powerful for you because I didn't talk about list growth. So one of the questions was, is there any particular template you'd recommend to get people to subscribe to your list? So probably a little bit different answer to the question you're expecting. So for in order to get people to sign up to your email list, we need to think of it as a value exchange. Everyone knows how valuable their inbox is and how valuable their email is now. And they're not just gonna give it away unless they don't get anything in return. So what you need to think about is what are you offering that person for their email address? Okay, so it doesn't matter about templates, it doesn't matter about anything, it's about what is the value exchange that's going to be there. So if you have just sign up to my newsletter, no one's really going to do that unless your newsletter is awesome and it gives them stock trading tips or whatever it is, something that, that, that is valuable to them, right? They won't sign up. That's why you'll often see discounts and things on signups because it's a value exchange. It's like, okay, I'm paying you for your email address. Now, discounts are good. You know, I prefer dollar discounts versus percent discounts, but happy for you to test it. Um, sometimes giving away something free, like free shipping is always a good one. You know, free gift with purchase, enter a competition, join my VIP list where you get bonuses, um, you know, download a free PDF. These are all ways that you can get people's email addresses. And 
no one one works better than the other. It's just trialing them out and seeing what works for your brand. Um, you know, go into the draw, be get first access, all these sorts of ones that you see out there. So try them all and see what works for you. There's one metric that you just need to measure when you do each of these, and it's in Klaviyo. It's called your form submit rate, right? So every every offer that you change, um, you need to measure the form submit rate to see whether it goes up or goes down. We want it to go up. Okay, hopefully that's helpful. Cool. All right, I've kept you longer than I should have. Sorry, kids, you've been kept in class longer. It's not detention, you were learning. Um, but yeah, hopefully you found that useful, team. Thanks for sticking around. We got maybe 80% of people stuck around, so that was great. Um, got one minute. I want to hear from everyone. What's one your biggest takeaway from this masterclass that we did, this one and a half hour masterclass that went for two? <laughs> What's one thing that uh, what's one thing that you can take away from this masterclass in your business? Okay, the order to do things, hundred percent. Set up the store. Yes, uh, I just want to do a caveat on the set up the store. I probably should have said it. I also don't want you to get analysis paralysis. Okay, so your store doesn't need to be perfect before we try things. Okay, I probably should have emphasized that a little bit more for everyone else because we sometimes wait for perfection and it hinders our progress, okay? So we want to get it to a level that we're comfortable with, maybe a little bit embarrassed about, but we just want to go live. My mentor said to me, he goes, mate, if you're, in, if you're not embarrassed by when you launch, then you waited too long, okay? So don't let what I've said about getting it all set up first hold you back. Get it to a stage where it's almost ready and then go for it, okay? Because okay? we can change the wheels on this car while it's driving. That's no problem at all. We, the car does not stop driving. All right, cool. UVP, so many things. Yeah, analysis paralysis, Sandy. Come on, just do it. Just pull the plug. If you've got most of it done, 80% of the way there, 80% done is better than not launched at all. All right? Uh, learning every time you speak. Thank you, Matt. All right, superstars. Uh, thank you so much for those that jumped on the boot camp. I'm going to be looking forward to chatting to you guys in there. Uh, hopefully, you've all learned something from here. It's hard to pack all of this into such a small class, but uh, such a small timeline. But hopefully, there's at least one or two nuggets that you can take away on each of those things. So that next time we speak, you're the one in the chat saying, I've done 10K. Like, this is easy. Where's my 100? Let's go. All right, team. Over and out. Enjoy the rest of your evening, morning, day, whatever it is that you're at. Really nice to hang with you guys. See you later.